Hi, Maura. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, and you? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Perfect. It's not the case of a wolf. <laughs> I was sorry about not having his picture. Uh, so welcome again to everyone in this very virtual way. <laughs> uh, now it's a great pleasure for me, as also was a case of wolf, to introduce you, Maura Estefani. Yeah, she was graduated in archaeology and conservation of the archaeological of archaeological heritage, and since the 2009, she has been working at the Parco. Uh, I'm sorry for my Italian, Maura. Parco Archaeologico Didactico de Livelet in Italy. First as an ed educator and later as a coordinator of didactics. The di didactics between the uh, 2014 and the 2016. She uh, was, uh, could, could I say, a great member of the XR board, and it was a really pleasure to meet you there. Maura, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here in this seminar, and uh, thank you very much for staying with us. <laughs> thank you. You can start when you want. And to the team of uh, the museum for the invitation and for the work you did uh, to organize this uh, um, this uh, webinar. It's a pleasure for me because you asked to me to talk about uh, two of my passions, the place where I work and experimental archaeology. And it's a pleasure to work uh, with you, Javier. So I'm going to share Yeah, from the moment I we can see it, I will close my audio. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we see the we see the power, and you can start the presentation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. okay, go. But do you see the? Okay, perfect. Because I saw the bar of the. Of yes, yes, yes. We can see. Okay. So let's start. The place where I work is uh, Parco Archeologico Didattico del Livelet, that is an open air museum uh, in Italy, uh, where we tell the daily life between Neolithic and Copper Age and Bronze Age in a pile dwelling village. We are in the Veneto region, uh, about 100 kilometers from Venice. The park is located in the eastern shore of one of the two lakes that compose the complex of Laghi della Vallata. The lakes at the valley where they lay um, is of glacial origin. The Open Air Museum was built to enhance the discovery of an archaeological site in the isthmus of land that today separates the two lakes. As you can see, the history of the research begins in the 20s uh, uh, when the first object uh, was uh, discovered uh, and uh, in particular metal objects uh, uh, resulting for the, from the excavation of a channel to uh, connect uh, the two lakes uh, or following illegal excavation to collect uh, pit. Official excavation date back to the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s followed by some publication. In the last four years, we had an emergency excavation for the construction of a bridge between the two shores and some recent surveys aimed uh, to gather new information about the archaeological site itself. These are the references. The results of the investigation is the identification of a site, uh, an archaeological site uh, dated back between the end of Neolithic and the beginning of the Bronze Age, and uh, the attendance of the area also in the Middle and Recent, uh, recent uh, Bronze Age. So the superintendents put the archaeological constraint in order to uh, protect this area. Then uh, the desire to give value to this discover and to disseminate it uh, to the public uh, by the province of Treviso and all other local authorities made possible the reconstruction project. We are only talking about reconstruction because the original finds are still under study. It is the reason why the sources for the uh, reconstruction are the Colmaggiore archaeological sites, so 
the one that was uh, um, excavated near the location of the actual open air museum, but also other pile dwelling sites of the Alpine region dated to the same periods, and also ethnographic uh, uh, comparisons. Here you can see some, some uh, image of the excavation. Uh, unfortunately, part of the material uh, came from uh, um, uh, areas without uh, um, context uh, because uh, some areas were interested by pit extraction in the past. So mainly pottery and flint uh, helped uh, for the datation of the site. And here we have some example of uh, the findings, uh, pottery, lithic industry and uh, metal objects. Thanks uh, to the findings, uh, we can reconstruct uh, the everyday life uh, in the village in prehistory. So we know that uh, the economy was based uh, on agriculture and farming, but also hunting, gathering and exploitation of the lake resources. The environment was also exploited for raw materials for the construction of houses and tools. One of the other sites that have been studied to collect information useful for the reconstruction is Fiave in Trentino region, where the use of wood has been studied very well thanks to a perfect, to an incredible um, conservation of uh, the wooden part of the houses and also a lot of objects. In particular, the Fiave level 6, dated back to the Middle Bronze Age, um, uh, give a lot of information about uh, different construction techniques in a wet environment. And this is the result. A develop was built three pile dwellings dedicated to three different periods, so Neolithic, Copper Age and Bronze Age. Uh, and uh, reconstructed using three different models. Uh, one on the ground, one half on the ground, half on the water, and one completely built uh, on the water. You can see some, um, some reconstructions. And here, some imaging of uh, the, the work in progress, the construction of uh, uh, the pile dwellings, where you can see some compromises uh, in order to make uh, uh, the building safe for the visitors uh, and other compromises that have been um, well explained by Wolf uh, in the, in, uh, the last uh, uh, presentation. Uh, but you can also appreciate some uh, details, uh, uh, some attention to the details uh, in order to make the reconstruction more philologic. Here you can see some interiors image with the furniture and the objects that are different from uh, building to building because every pipe dwelling is dedicated to a different period. Here, the wall park with the, the, reconstructed, uh, the reconstruction area, but also the other structure that uh, allow us to uh, carry on our uh, didactic activities. And about the management, um, the head is the province of Treviso that entrusted uh, to the association Umpli Treviso the management of the park. I work for this association Umpli Treviso and also uh, the, other, um, uh, the other didactic operators and uh, guides that work inside the Open Air Museum. And um, we have the pressure, uh, help and contribution of uh, uh, the um, local municipality and other local associations. What we do in uh, Livelet? We work with uh, tourists, groups and families with a Sunday opening, but also we um, work with uh, every level of uh, the school. We offer guided tours uh, to the pie dwellings, uh, but also to the lake environment. And uh, several, we offer several events uh, and special openings, uh, even dedicated uh, to living history, but also to local products uh, and traditional techniques. 
We are also very proud of the exchanges we do both nationally and internationally with our museum and professionals dealing with archaeology and reconstruction. Um, which allow our public uh, to have always new activities uh, and uh, to our staff to be always updated and open to exchange uh, of uh, good practices. Our keywords are exchange and interdisciplinarity. The results of our, uh, of our work is, um, is uh, this uh, numbers. Uh, in uh, the last year, we had more than 20,000 visitors and uh, every one of them had been guided because the tours uh, are always guided and therefore providing an exchange between public, staff and place. So, how do we use experimental archaeology in our uh, work? At this point, we need a reflection because at Livelet, we only have reconstruction, not the original finds. Um, there are several ways to deal with the reconstruction in order to make the public experience the past. Here, I will use the definition of Exarch, the association also nominated by, by Professor Baena in the first presentation, in order to have a common uh, referent, a common speech. For example, ancient and traditional technology is the study and the execution of ancient techniques that we know thanks to the archaeological research. And it includes a presentation of the past crafts and technique to the public, also without the interpretation or an experimental goal. It is important to preserve the context of time and space, and the aim is to produce tangible objects. Another way to deal with the constructions is interpretation and education. So getting the story across the public. It is the interaction between the museum, the staff and the visitors. In this way, visitors can feel personally connected with a resource or a place and care of it. Interpretation and education, for example, can include text, image, panels, but also guided tours. Live or uh, live interpretation. One of the aim is to entertain and to involve the public as well as uh, transmit the content. And experimental archaeology. As we today have the opportunity to hear, um, experimental archaeology can have several definitions. It is fundamental for filling gaps in our knowledge of the past. And the core activity is testing an hypothesis and to answer to a specific research question. But it can be applied in various forms, from strictly speaking science to something that makes the public experience the past, in particular in the dissemination of the results. A Livelette, we do ancient technology, uh, for example, for the construction of the pile dwellings, because there are uh, um, uh, a base of information that came from archaeological excavation, but there are also a lot of compromises uh, to make them um, uh, suitable for the, for the public, for the visitors, and also durable in time. Uh, but we also do a demonstration for, for the public and uh, during special events uh, we also um, do uh, training for the staff and we produce a new object to enrich our exposition. Interpretation and education is one of our missions. We do this during the guided tours, putting at first place the exchange with the public and involving every visitor, stimulating also the exchange of personal experience. It is an exchange between the staff, the public, and also the people of the past through their abilities and their knowledge that we report during the guided tours. We also organize special events dedicated to living history, when the staff for a day live in the village doing several everyday activities. We also 
uh, include in this uh, uh, category all the workshop that we organize for children, for adults, uh, uh, to allow them to reproduce uh, ancient uh, objects, but also ancient uh, gesture and to live the past with all the senses. We use specifically experimental archaeology in some cases. For example, recently we have uh, commissioned the reconstruction of a sword starting from the original find preserved in the Civic Museum of Conegliano, that is near us, 10 kilometers. The, uh, and this word was, uh, is one of the few original finds uh, uh, that now is, uh, is uh, exhibits in a museum. In this case, we cooperated with a group of uh, techno archaeologists who carried out the reconstruction with the uh, experimental archaeology technique, uh, contributing to their research uh, on ancient weapons and molds used for casting, but also providing us uh, a new object to exhibit and to tell to the visitors, and a special event during which uh, the public could see a live melting of an instrument similar to the one produced in a controlled environment. We also use the results from experimental archaeology as a training for the staff that have to be always updated. Um, and again, for production of new objects and new furnitures for our exhibition to plan new, contest, uh, new contents uh, for the tours and for the workshop in order to improve our didactic activities, dissemination and valorization of the heritage. So to conclude, our teaching activities, our didactic activities uh, develops uh, through guided tours, workshop and special events in order in order to involve visitors uh, talking about prehistory and nature. And experimental archaeology is one of the bridge that allow us to do it and to involve the public, the, the public, uh, make it possible to, um, uh, to give um, an experience to the public. And all our activities and cooperation on various levels uh, and the valorization of the territory have the purpose to educate uh, to the heritage, to set uh, knowledge uh, transmitted for person to person, and allow our, our museum to grow up uh, as a place that uh, creates a culture in a more general sense. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maura. All, all of the... Uh people who contribute to the seminar adjust the presentation to the time. So thank you very much for being so strict with the time. Uh, now, if you don't mind, we have time, some time, 10 minutes, around 10 minutes uh, for questions or comments. So if you are open, uh, I see that here comes the first one who says, oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I also... Uh, give me some time to read them. Okay, I have a I have a comment. is is about the relation. Just just not because of your presentation, but coming from a southern country, as is the case of uh, Spain, uh, and I know perfectly that you know how the things are running in the north part of Europe. Could you explain us? How is your feeling about the uh, level in which experimental archaeology in any in all of the many ways it can be uh, presented uh, is developed in Italy? I think it's a not very comfortable question, but I try oh. to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure because I, I had the opportunity to present a, um, a very um, active uh, um, uh, field also also in Italy because uh, um, in Italy experimental archaeology is uh, uh, carried on uh, by um, freelancer but also by some universities and uh, um, inside the some museum not only uh, open air open air museum but uh, um, also also uh, also other museum. And uh, in this uh, 
period, it is uh, very active. Uh, in the last month, we saw the um, born of a new journal dedicated to experimental archaeology in Italy. Great. Mm, yes. Great. Yeah. It is uh, something very, very uh, recent, uh, and um, uh, it is a very successful um, uh, initiative. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, the, the journal born inside uh, the university and the academy, but uh, it is uh, um, um, carried on also by freelancer. Yeah, please share it with us. Uh, send yes. some information to the yes, to yes, the yes, yes. present in the chat. We have another another question in the chat. Uh, it's in Spanish. Uh, do the uh, uh, staff from the park participate uh, in the experiments? Uh, are they uh, archaeologists? We are in most part archaeologists. Uh, archaeologists. Uh, um, um, uh, from different periods, so we can uh, share all of our uh, knowledge and uh, also different approaches to the to the past. And yes, we uh, we participate uh, uh, actively to the to the activities. Everyone is uh, uh, deal more with a material or um, an instrument uh, than the others. Not uh, everyone can do the same things, but uh, in this way we built a team that works uh, together. How many how many people is working at the park? Ten. Uh, ten people, ten people. Yeah, it's a good number, yeah. Not as so Gabby. much. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can control this number. <laughs> as guide, uh, but we have a big uh, office uh, uh, on our back that uh, uh, manage all the, all the structure and other initiatives. Uh, another question. Uh, let me see. You have it in the in the questions and, and answer. How has the pandemic affected the level of education? It's a complicated uh, question. Yes. For example, the guide activities of workshop. Thank you very much for your magnificent presentation. It come from Irene Mejia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So about this uh, particular year, um, we have been closed for. Yeah. Month. And we usually open uh, our season uh, uh, at the end of February mm. uh, with the first schools, uh, and then we have uh, schools until uh, the, until June. Then we have uh, special activities in the summer, and then again the schools in the autumn. Now we close uh, uh, at the um, starting of November. Hmm. But this year we have been closed uh, since uh, February. We reopen in June, and we we are happy um, of the results uh, of the summer season because we had uh, a lot of visitors uh, in this in uh, the the opening days. So in principle during the holidays uh, and uh, Sunday, but we are also happy to um, to say that uh, this uh, challenge uh, became um, uh, an opportunity for us because we organize a lot of new activities during the summer period in particular for kids uh, that uh, were um, were at home so need a place uh, uh, to to go to to do activity during the day uh, so we organize some <laughs> new activities that have been successful. And uh, we are happy that uh, people appreciate uh, the fact that uh, we are open air and uh, we can offer a lot of activities uh, uh, in a safety uh, environment. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, mm, at least don't save the year because uh, uh, we have been closed for a month. Uh, yeah. and this yeah. is the fact. Yeah, it's a dramatic period. Yeah, yeah, for mm. all the cultural uh, units and we tried, activities. We try to transform it uh, in yeah. opportunity. 
because as I said, we, we try to do uh, a lot of uh, new activities uh, open air. Uh, for example, in the summer period, uh, we open also in uh, Saturday, that is something that we didn't do from years. And uh, we reopen with uh, special activities like uh, uh, picnic, uh, open air. Mm. Uh, in the evening uh, with uh, storytelling uh, and uh, a night visit uh, to the pine dwellings. Uh, uh, so we, we, we accept uh, the challenge, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it can be a very, very difficult year. And a lot of people that work, usually work in uh, the Open Air Museum uh, didn't work this, uh, this year. Jordi make another question. He is, is more or less related with the previous. Uh, he asked, uh, are the uh, rec re recreation uh, or the activities, historical activities made by professionals or, or just uh, main volunteers or people related with the organization? In most part uh, by the staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, other people that we involved, uh, it depends from the, the, the event, for example, uh, for the uh, rep reconstruction of this world, uh, we involved uh, some architect technician in Tradispade. Uh, mm -hmm. I put the, the logo in the presentation. Uh, they used our uh, data uh, to improve their researches uh, and they give us a new, a new object to exhibit uh, and uh, give to our public a uh, wonderful experience of uh, live uh, melting. And uh, uh, when we want to organize uh, um, uh, uh, an activity that deal a particular material or a particular period, uh, we involved uh, also other professional or we are the staff uh, that uh, are particularly involved in some, some uh, specific uh, field. And uh, we cooperate a lot uh, with the uh, other museum. Every year we uh, choose one or two other museum of the area to exchange uh, activities and also to exchange uh, part of the staff uh, for one day. Uh, oh, so well, nice. Cooperation, <laughs> cooperation is very important. Yeah. Uh, some of this uh, cooperation that uh, um, uh, have been uh, um, occasional for a period, um, in, in the time became uh, uh, something that we do regularly inside the Open Air Museum. For example, the cooperation that we have with the naturalistic guide that uh, uh, put uh, the, the bring the people outside the Open Air Museum to view the lake environment and to to enjoy it. <laughs> Because we are in a naturalist in a wonderful naturalistic area, also recognized in the European community, because the lake environment is very particular, and uh, we um, we try to um, give value to the archaeological and historical um, um, uh, part of our of our territory, but also to the naturalistic uh, environment uh, and try to. Value to it. Mm -hmm. Just following the question from Manuel, Manuel make a question about numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, this uh, we hate numbers. Uh, he asked, how could we define the percentage of uh, support coming from the administration, the public administration, and how much could be the contribution of uh, visitors uh, fees? Uh, we every year we cover our expense. <laughs> but um, the balance is is zero. <laughs> yes, is uh, is um, yes, it's zero because we are uh, uh, no profit uh, yeah. association. We are managed by a no profit association, so we can cover uh, the 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 payment of the staff because there are not uh, volunteers. Uh, uh, in some, uh, some events, uh, we involved volunteers uh, of uh, the local uh, association, but uh, um, people that do guided tours uh, in the Open Air Museum are always paid. So we cover the, expensive, uh, the, uh, the expense of uh, the, um, the staff, but also of the material. And um, we have a bookshop that help in, uh, in this. And uh, we have the help uh, of the um, administration only for the extraordinary 
maintain, um, maintenance of the of the Premier Museum. For example, in this period, we are working uh, uh, in fundraising for mm -hmm. our roof that's yeah. need, that needs uh, maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Think about hero as Wolf told us. Well, it's, it's a complicated uh, matter, but asking money for hero could be a solution in in, in travels uh, during the travel. So, Maura, thank you very much. We feel the our schedule with the time. Uh, it has been a great pleasure to see you again. Hope your family is <laughs> okay. And uh, think about the possibility of coming again to XR uh, uh, team. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a vice vice uh, president, vice secretary, vice okay. president. But okay. um, think about it because it was a really pleasure. Uh, I think we have a, a time. It's time to make a, another break. Uh, we will restart at uh, seventeen fifty, if I'm not wrong. Tony, could you help me with the time uh, with the schedule? And uh, yes, yes, I'm well, think, right. Cinco y diez. Bye. Cinco y diez. Cinco y diez. Sí. Oh, okay. Bye, so. Maura. Thank you very much. Ciao. So we, we will restart at 5 10 a las 4 a las 4:50. 4:50. Ah, perdona. Ya me sí, sí, sí. No, no, me, me he liado yo. 4:50. <ríe> Muy bien. Pues entonces nos vemos entonces. Hasta ahora. Chao.